Property and Finance Committee meeting the order. Uh, we'll start with the uh, folks that are at City Hall. If you want to go around and introduce yourselves, please. Scott Kelly, Alderperson. Dean Veneman, Alderperson. Thad Kubishek, uh, committee member. Jennifer Gasick, city clerk. That's it, Steve. Okay. Um, I'll start for the online folks. Uh, my name is Steve Koch. I'm the chairperson, property and finance committee. And is there anyone else online that would like to introduce themselves? That's for show. I'm actually upstairs in my office, so I can come down if needed. Tyler, do we have anyone else online? All right, All right we'll, uh, we'll just move on. And um, our first business item is review and consider for approval in ordinance, which would authorize the Waterworks and Lighting Commission to place delinquent electric bills as a special charge on the property tax roll. See attached ordinance. Um, if they went from water and light there. Uh, yes, Steve. Uh, this is uh, Jeff Kuhn from Water and Light. Um, I'd like to thank. Excuse. Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank the committee for putting this on the agenda today, and I'd like to express some appreciation to Sue Schill for creating the proposed ordinance language. You hear it okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, Wisconsin statute section 66.0809 states that water utilities shall place past due water balances on the annual tax roll, but it requires a local ordinance to be enacted to transfer electric uh, arrearages onto the tax roll. The vast majority of Wisconsin's 82 municipal electric utilities have this ab ability to tax roll past due electric balances with ordinances in their local communities similar to the one that Sue put together. Uh, in March of 2020, as part of the public health emergency, the Public Service Commission barred electric and water utilities from disconnecting utility services for non-payment. To date, the disconnect prohibition on residential customers continues. Today, there's no real deterrent for a customer that chooses not to pay his or her utility bill, and it's showing up in our past due accounts receivable. As of September 30th, Electric past due receivables are 56% higher and water is 135% higher. Past due receivables make up 25% of the utilities accounts receivables and total receivables have increased uh, approximately a million dollars in the past year. If the PSC doesn't allow the utilities to disconnect service for non-payment into 2021 as some people are suggesting, the financial strength of the utility may be at stake. The utility needs to maintain and install expensive infrastructure to provide service to all its customers. Some electric utility assets are depreciated for 40 years or more, meaning the infrastructure put in today may require a rate of return until 2060 or beyond. Customers not paying their bills has a negative impact on the utility's ability to replace these assets that exceed their useful life. I also believe it's inequitable for all customers to pay for those that choose not to pay their bill and socialize these costs amongst the rest of the ratepayers. If this ordinance is approved, the utility would continue to attempt to collect past due amounts from its customers. The tax roll process would just be another tool when the others have not worked. The change would help ensure the utility stays fiscally sound going into the future. Uh, thank you again for uh, bringing this to the committee and uh, Gem and I are here if you guys any additional questions? Thank you. Well, I think uh, I think this sounds pretty straightforward. That uh, our public service uh, utility is uh, providing the service, and that uh, that cost does need to be recouped and not uh, passed on to everybody over the community. So, um, just to move forward here, I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance as presented. I'll second, Scott Keller. Okay. All right, uh, anyone else have any questions or further discussion? Hearing none, 
Uh, we have a, a motion and second. Committee will vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Um, item number three is review and consider for approval and intergovernmental uh, services agreement with the Saltwood County Airport Commission for the city to continue to provide airport management services at Alexander Field. I guess, uh, this is Sue, can I, do you want me to address this? Yeah, go ahead, Sue. Uh, so this is uh, the agreement that we've had. I think the original was, I can't remember if it was a three-year or a four-year agreement. Um, it had expired a few, uh, probably over a year ago and um, had never really formally been extended. So uh, there are a few minor changes have been made in terms of exactly what the city is doing in terms of operations and such. Um, and so what you have, I, what I had sent to you is the agreement. It's a five-year agreement. Uh, it actually goes in through 2025, so uh, basically an additional four years from the end of this year. Um, what it, Basically what happens is uh, we have a, we hire, uh, the city as an employee has Jeremy uh, Sickler, and he is then the airport manager. So the, air, the airport commission reimburses the city for all of his salary and benefits. Um, any other employees that we have there are reimbursed, uh, that the city has are reimbursed. And then there's an additional administrative fee uh, for the city because the city handles all of the financial accounting, bookkeeping, uh, receipts and billing uh, for uh, hangar rent. For the commission so that is determined each year and, and um, added in at present there isn't an addendum a and an addendum b because that's going to be worked through the, uh, through the budget process right now to determine exactly what those things are um, but that will be um, you know basically just the salaries the benefits and then um, the administration fee and i think i don't know if tim is there if he kind of wants to address all that what, how that's arrived at, um, but otherwise it's it's pretty much the same as um, previous previous years. And I know the mayor, as the chair of the airport commission, can um, can speak to this also. Dean, are you there? Yep, I'm here, Steve. Do uh, you have anything on this agreement? Or? Yes, so the airport commission has gone through um, at their last meeting, and we're in favor of that language. Great. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, agreement with the airport commission as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Is there any other further discussion or questions? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Item number four is review and consider for uh, approval of referral from the Public Works Superintendent to purchase a Graco paint transfer pump in a Graco line striper with laser DOT. Paul? All right, thank you. Um, so what this is, is the last uh, five years, we've had two workman's comp claims down in our sign shop um, because we physically, every single night, the center line machine goes out. We have to load that with um, 40 to 80 gallons of paint, um, which consists of claim, climbing three steps of stairs and then lifting it three feet, dumping it into, um, into the paint machine, you know, about waist height. And so um, the work group came to me and said, hey, could we look at purchasing this transfer pump? And by purchasing this transfer pump, it would do two things. We could um, eliminate and purchase the paint in five gallon pails. We could look at purchasing it in 55 gallon drums, which would possibly save us anywhere from 15 to 25 cents a gallon. Um, 
and then it would also eliminate the fact that we'd have to you know dump anywhere from 16 five gallon pails into the machine every single night um, and so in doing in in researching this um, we had a conversation with the vendor he gave us a price and and just on a whim I said well hey how much for a new walk behind machine which is what the uh, the second item is and he gave us a price um, of $6,309.88, or $6 which in my uh, request or my referral is $500 more than, than the paint machine that we purchased 11 years ago. So now obviously it's, it's October, our paint season is done, um, but you know, he said that that's pretty much the price that, that he's paying for the machine. Um, and so, like I said, our other machine is 11 years old. It paints about um, 800 gallons a year. So it, it has had a fair amount of paint go through it. Um, it still works fine, um, but if it does go down, our, our existing, or our, our spare is 20 years old that we can't even get parts for anymore. So um, my recommendation would be to, to purchase both the transfer pump and the, uh, um, the additional walk machine, walk behind machine and the, the, it's a dot laser, um, Alderman Colth. And so what that does is instead of having to snap string line for every single new paint mark, is it sh simply shoots a laser and that'll save on some, uh, some layout time and stuff like that also. All right, does anyone have any questions for Paul? Uh, based on the presentation from Paul that this uh, machine will in a way pay for itself and save on cost of supplies over time. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the Graco paint transfer pump, uh, Graco line striper with laser dot as presented. I'll second that. Kubishak. We have motion and second. Is there any other further discussion or questions? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item number five is review and consider for approval or referral from Public Works Superintendent to purchase a solar powered traffic arrow board. Paul? Okay. Yep. Uh, so this is another item here. Uh, just one of those things in uh, the referral. You know, we use these uh, solar powered air boards quite frequently throughout the summer months and winter. Um, and, and looking at our fleet, uh, we have two of them from, or three of them. One's from 1999, 2004, and 2005. Uh, this week is a prime example. We had a lane closure set up on Highway 54 and W, and then also out on uh, West Riverview Expressway. We took the uh, third air board out and because it was, you know, when they build them, they build them as cheap as possible and they use cam or uh, scotch locks to put together the wiring. And because it sits out in the weather and things like that all the time, um, the solar panel no longer charges the batteries. And so to replace the, the solar panel and things like that just isn't cost effective because you still have a 21-year-old um, aero board. And so uh, we looked at upgrading it. Um, the new ones are all our LED lights less batteries, more um, cost effective to operate. This one also is a simpler version. Uh, they make them where they have 20 different aero designs and things like that. We only need four. Um, and so we're, we're recommending to purchase this from Tapco Traffic and Parking uh, for $4,678.75. It's a simple version. It'll do what we need to do and uh, it'll save us from having to go out and pick it up off the road and, and bring another one out there and stuff like that, so. Thank you, Paul. Anyone have any questions or comments for Paul? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the arrow board as presented. I'll second Kellogg. So motion second, is there any other further discussion or questions? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Item number six is review and consider for approval a referral from the Public Works Superintendent to purchase one snowplow for an end loader. Paul? 
Okay, so um, I believe it was four years ago we made a decision to start to move in the direction of keeping our end loaders around um, instead of keeping 35 and 40 year old um, graders around. Um, so in doing that, we have two end loaders that um, are 18 and 19 years old as, as are the snow plows that are on them. Um, in the winter time, you know, obviously these things are plowing snow whenever it snows and the metal and the welds and things like that are starting to get fatigued and we're, you know, breaking down in the middle of snow events and stuff like that. They're also, um, when Mr. Borski originally purchased them, um, it was the first ones that we ever purchased. They also have 10 foot wings on them, which requires us to make three passes on a road, um, which in um, Mr. Kellogg's area isn't too big of a deal because those streets are narrower down there. Um, but in some of the other uh, neighborhoods where we have 32 foot wide roads and things like that, it ends up making it take about nine hours to do something that should take six. And so in, in years previous, um, Jim had started to purchase plows with 12 foot wings on them, which allows us to do everything in one pass, you know, each direction. And so um, we plan on keeping these loaders for, you know, at least four or five more years. But the good part about upgrading the plows and wings is, is they're not um, specific to a piece of equipment. If we replace a loader, we can simply put it on the next machine that comes in. We might have to do some modifications to the wing support or something like that, but it's in-house. It doesn't need to be changed out or anything like that. Um, so what I would like to do or what I'm recommending to the committee is to to purchase this um, wing from Hanky Snow Plows. Um, it's the same wings, plows and wings that we have on our two newest loaders. They're extremely heavy built. Um, Hanky stands behind them. We've had one failure in four years on this, on the ones that we have. And it was simply a manufacturer issue. We made some recommendations for improving it. And that's what they use now in their production. Um, they, they provide very good support and everything like that. Um, and, and we really like them. They do a nice job. They're heavy built and, and they scrape really well compared to some of the other ones. All right, does anyone have any questions for Paul? Hearing none, I'll make a moment I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the one snow pulp for an end loader as presented. I'll second Kubashek. <clears throat> we have motion and second. Is there um, any other discussion on this item? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Item number seven is consider a recommendation from statewide services to deny a claim from Brian Penner for damages to his vehicle. Um, is Tim online or no? Yes, I am. Um, uh, statewide services, as you can see in the packet, uh, sent a letter uh, recommending after an investigation finding no liability on half on behalf of the city to deny the claim. And basically, as we, you know, I've discussed in the past and these things that basically denying the claim just shortens the statute of limitations to a period of six months for the claimant to pursue further legal action. All right, thank you, Tim. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation as presented by statewide services. I'll second. Kellogg. All right, we have a motion and second. Is there any other further discussion? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Um, Scott and Tad, were you guys both ayes? Yes. Okay, I didn't, didn't come through on my end. All right, um, motion carries 3-0. Item number eight is review and consider a request for a change order from OBG Ramble for design modifications related to the rail extension in the Rapid East Commerce Center. Um, is Joe Terry there tonight or? Joe Eichstead is. Joe? Yes. Um, are you handling this one, Joe? Yep. 
So just to give you a little bit of background on OBG's request, they're, they're the engineering firm that's working for the city for the rail crossing on 48th Street uh, in conjunction with the Metelco uh, development. So they're requesting $5,150 in additional engineering design fees uh, related to plan modifications as a result of uh, an on-site meeting that we had with the DOT rail engineer. The two primary items that were that were discussed from the DOT rail engineer included uh, lowering the road elevation, uh, which is primarily positioned based upon a culvert diameter requirement that CN had. Um, so there was additional work with requesting an exception from CN and updating the plans for that. And then also um, changing from a stop control situation on 48th Street to a yield control. Uh, and that included some redesign and resubmittal of documents to the Office of the Commission of Railroads. And um, so the plans, are, the plans are nearly final at this point. Um, and so I, we, I wouldn't expect to see any additional charges from OBG. And I would um, entertain any other questions that anybody has. Does anyone have any questions for uh, Joe from the committee? Um, I just have a question. I, I don't have a problem with the issue, but it said the funding is going to come from the transportation enhancement grant and through cost sharing amounts as identified in the development agreement with Metallico. So what portion is going to be paid for by the city? So for, for the design services, I believe the the city is, is um, by agreement, providing all of the design costs and then a portion, a set proportion of the construction costs uh, as it relates to the, um, the T grant, the transportation enhancement grant for construction. So for design, though, the city, I believe, is, is covering all the costs for that. Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, with the developer agreements that we have with Metalco, is the city will pay up to $300,000 towards the project. And obviously, and then, you know, the, the T grant, depending on how that all comes out, and then anything above that would be the responsibility of Metelco. It should also be said that the 300000 that the city is committed to towards this project will be funded through tax incremental district number eight. So basically, it'll be funded by the tax increment created by the Metelco development. Anyone else have any other questions or comments on this? Um, hearing none, I will make a motion to approve the change order with OVG Ramble for modifications to the rail extension and Rapid East Commerce Center has presented. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Is there any other further discussion or questions? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. And number nine is the beverage operator licenses. I'm not there in person, but um, I assume you guys have. I, I did hear the clerk say that there was no recommendations for denial by the police chief. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, finding no problems with the beverage operator licenses, I will make a motion to approve the beverage operator licenses as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Is there any other further discussion? Hearing none, committee will vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Item number 10 is audit of the bills. Um, does everyone have a chance to look at those? Yeah, this is um, Scott Kellogg. I had some questions about um, we have St. Saint Michael's is charging $4,824 for fitness. What does that, what, what's involved with that? It's uh, item, a number 
5,497. Um, if you remember, it's like it's part of our FIT program that uh, you know, was approved through the Human Resources Committee on an annual basis. That's where we have on-site uh, physical therapist here to deal with uh, various issues that you know employees can go to. Um, if you remember that from the past, so yeah. that's the probably the, the monthly amount. It's it's approximately we pay around sixty some thousand dollars a year to have that on site service available to our employees. Yeah, I didn't think it was through St. Michael's. I thought it might have been yeah. through Aspire. Oh, okay. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. And then um, item five, uh, not invoice 5,686, it said for $5,182 to Wisconsin Rapids School District for a mobile home fees. Right. Um, uh, we, we collect mobile home fees from the, the mobile home parks, and statutorily, that's the school district's share of those mobile home fees or mobile home taxes. So we, we collect them and then remit it uh, quarterly to the school district, their share. And then uh, 5,794 says Adam County Highway Department, 6,829. Uh, 5,794 says Adams County Highway Department, 6,829. $829. I'm just wondering why Adams County. Tim, do, is that where we buy the oil from when we do the... Yeah, it could be like supplies or anything, but I can... Oh. The oil, when we do the oil on the roads with the pea gravel? I was just curious. Okay. It was for painting of the roads, so they must have done some uh, road painting for us, uh, performed on August 15th. All right. And I have my last one would be 5518 is for uh, catering expenses. And then later on, it's another catering expenses for 125, 5518 is for 440. What was the check number on that again? Five thousand five hundred and eighteen. Five thousand five eighteen. And then, um, does that sound okay with you, Thad? Yeah, that's fine with me. That's fine with me too. Scott, that's fine with me All right. too. All right. So, I believe that covers items eleven and twelve, um, which brings us to item number thirteen, which is adjournment. So Make moved. A motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have motion second. Any further discussion? Um, just a reminder to everybody then that our next regularly scheduled meeting will be 4.30 on Wednesday, November 4th. Um, with that, all in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, ayes have it, and we stand adjourned at 5.15 p.m. Uh, thank you all for being here. Goodbye.